پاکستان ان دا لاسٹ کلاس وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا براڈر ایسپیکٹس آف پولیٹیکل گورننس اینڈ ہاؤ دا ڈفرینٹ فیکٹرز اینڈ ٹیکسچرز ٹین ٹو انٹیگریٹ ٹو کریٹ اے مور کنڈیوسو اینڈ بیٹر انوائرمنٹ فار دی ادر سیکٹرز ود ان اے پرٹیکولر اکانومی ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو موو فارورڈ ود پولیٹیکل گورننس اینڈ بیسکلی واٹ وی سی از دیٹ کانسٹیٹیوشنل گورنمنٹس آر کریکٹرائز بائی اسپیشل ریسٹرینٹس اسٹیبلش بائی لا دیز لاز آر امپوز آن پاور ہولڈرز ٹو انشور that citizens' rights are not being transgressed. So this is extremely important that in a constitutional government or within uh, political good governance, what we see is, is that laws are imposed uh, on power holders to ensure that the rights of other citizens are not being transgressed. So uh, they are not being abused, they're not being manipulated, they're not being exploited. And then most importantly, they are promulgating specific laws which should be implementable across the board without any exception uh, so that there is more trust And secondly, there is more implementation rather than just having cosmetics and talking about it and not doing anything. So that is extremely important. Constitutionalism embodies the principles that the government is organized by and operated on behalf of the government. So again, it is the citizens, uh, basically, government, uh, because they are the ones who have voted them in, and therefore, uh, they have to bear out uh, with what the government is doing. The government is subject to a series of strains, a system of checks and balances, and to keep power from being abused so that the most important document is the constitution of Pakistan. And besides the constitution of Pakistan, there are hundreds of laws which are also applicable on the government officials and also uh, on the other sectors. And therefore, it's very important to maintain these checks and balances and to ensure that there is uh, a peaceful movement ahead of the economy and the nation as a whole. Uh, when we uh, look at the political governance by dividing power, constitutionalism provides a system of restraints upon coercive state action. So we have uh, the government and we have the opposition and the opposition tends to have oversight on the government and this ensures a very healthy relationship to ensure uh, that all power and authority is not accumulated in one vested uh, resource or context. Uh, the basic idea underpinning the state uh, tests on the notion of a law higher than the positive man-made law. So yes, there is spirituality and just like in the constitution of Pakistan, if we look at the preamble, then over there it is clearly written that Allah is the sovereign and therefore everyone else is just contributing. And this is very important in the fundamentals of Pakistan and also in other Islamic countries uh, around the world. Now, national law provides a criterion by which positive laws are judged. Legitimate governments always rest on the consent of the governed. So, what we see is, is that national laws, which are extremely important, they all are a part and parcel of the whole legal system. And those national laws which tend to exist tend to supersede the other man-made laws and also ensure Uh, that the legitimate governments, uh, they are constrained and they are also regulated and they are also confined within the ambits of the legal framework and they do not go or venture out because that will lead to chaos and confusion. Uh, a developed democracy according to ideas of political governance is a political system with a central local distribution of power. So yes, you have the core government which usually is the cabinet. Uh, they are subordinate distributions of power among agencies which functionally Uh, defined realms of authority. So there are different ministries, there are different departments in the provinces, there are different institutions, there are different organizations. They have their own limitations and also their own scope of work, which is basically governed by the rules of business, which exist in all of the provinces, also the federal government, there's the ESTA code, and there are other rules and regulations which tend to promote the role of government and give different institutions, departments, and ministries uh, broader uh, contextual roles so that they can regulate uh, what is actually taking place. Uh, thirdly, a chronological distribution of power through periodic and regular elections, which is extremely important. We have uh, the local elections just around the corner. We also are looking forward in one and a half years to have the general elections. So this has a this is a cleaning cleansing process and again a, a process by which the general public can give a voice and select the readers of their choice. So the fourth point is basically uh, that there is a written constitution enforceable by courts limiting the exercise of political power. So what we see is, is that through the constitution, Uh, the different stakeholders and the different institutions uh, have their own power. So the, uh, the parliament has their own power, the, the, the executive has its own power, the judiciary has its own power, uh, the parliament basically promulgates laws, the judiciary tends to interpret them, and the executive tends to implement them, the media tends to disseminate them, uh, the civil uh, society uh, tends to uh, see uh, its, base, uh, its better functionality, and these are the different main pillars of any democracy. And what we see is that uh, through the courts, Uh, the, the powers of the government are also curtailed so that they do not go beyond scope and therefore uh, they could discriminate against any specific group. 
so there has to be equity there has to be equality and there has to be compassion within the government st structure which tends to exist and the constitution is the mother of all laws to which then different laws uh, basically emerge and are enforced and implemented thank you so much